you've served the waves of startup life like, like a pro. What were some of the most valuable lessons um, you, know, you learned along the way? We're in a world where a lot of people have very similar ideas. Um, mm -hmm. And the idea itself is not necessarily unique, although you do have to dream big, you do have to have a vision. What differentiates people is really about that execution piece, is to say, okay, now here's my dream, I see it 10 years down the road. How do I break that mm -hmm. down into what I need to do You know, tomorrow, a week from now, mm -hmm. a month from now, a quarter from now, a year from now? Yeah. Um, and then building a team and have the discipline to do both the strategy and then the detail, um, mm -hmm. especially because in the beginning of a startup, you literally you're the, you know, chief bathroom cleaner, right? Chief, <laughs> like right, right, right. spreadsheet artist, right? There is you literally do everything. And it's the ability to be able to balance those two that I think is really critical. Welcome to the EU Startups Podcast. Sit back and enjoy the show hosted by Marcin Lewandowski. This episode of EU Startups Podcast is brought to you by Vanta. Are you building a business? Achieving compliance with frameworks like ISO 27001 and SOC 2 can help you win bigger deals, enter new markets, and deepen trust with customers. But this can also cost you real time and money. Vanta automates up to 90% of the work for the most in-demand frameworks, helping businesses get compliant quickly. And with over 300 integrations, you can easily monitor and secure the tools your businesses rely on. Join over 7,000 fast-growing companies that use Vanta to manage risk and prove security in real time. To learn more about how Vanta works and to get 20% off, visit vanta.com slash EU startups. That's vanta.com slash EU startups. Now, kick back and enjoy the show. Hey everyone, this is Marcin Lewandowski and you're listening to the EU Startups Podcast. My guest today is Shirley Romick, who's the Chief Accelerator Investment Officer at Techstars, the world's most active pre-seed investor. Um, awesome to have you on the show, Shirley. Thanks for joining me. Um, how are you today? I'm good. Thanks, Marcin, for having me. So glad to be here. Awesome. Let's dive right in then. Um, you know, joining Techstars must feel like stepping onto a rocket ship heading to the future. What are the things you're eager to tackle as the new Chief Accelerator Investment Officer? Uh, it's a long title. And how do you plan to supercharge Techstars to zero? Yeah, thanks so much for asking. Um, you know, at Techstars, we fund amazing, unstoppable founders, and but we also, as a company, growing ourselves as well. And so I'm really excited to um, build Techstars to the next level through 2.0, which is all about supercharging our organization as Techstars and yeah. invest in even more companies um, and help our, our founders fundraise better and then double down in the large capital, venture capital markets um, all around the world. Um, so this is a um, evolution of the business that we've been mm -hmm. thinking about for several years. Um, and really at this point, um, doubling down our efforts to evolve our business model. Amazing. So uh, Dexters 2.0 aims to make significant changes to you know, how accelerator programs operate, uh, yeah. aiming for closer synergy between uh, the accelerator investments and ecosystem development. Yeah. How do you envision harmonizing these elements to create a seamless um, journey for founders? Yeah, it's a really good question. So we're, we have a very unique model um, and our, our model is about building very, very strong pipelines um, even before a founder comes to an accelerator. And exactly. so ecosystem development is a part of our business that is a non-equity um, product. So effectively, we have a philosophy that we believe talent exists everywhere, but um, capital is not. Um, so what we do is we go out to every corner of the world and we have um, we we launch either startup weekends or um, what we call founder catalyst programs. These are um, a I would say a, a accelerator light model that's non equity, um, where we bring founders who may not quite yet be ready for an accelerator. Maybe they have an idea. Maybe they haven't um, 
de- decided to go be a found a company full time yet. Um, and we come in and we give them education tools to help them think about their business, um, refine their business model. Um, and so it's the it's the connection between that part of our business. Then as we put founders or potential founders through founder, founder catalyst and startup weekends, inevitably you have the founders who really feel passionate about their business that rise to the, the top. And then those founders we recruit into our accelerator programs. Sounds awesome. Um, truly, Alex, I know that um, like before joining Techstars, you also experienced some um, other entrepreneurial journeys yourself. Um, you know, scaling companies like Lyft and Equinox uh, to me sounds like being at the helm of you know a high speed train hurling towards growth. Uh, what's one wild ride uh, you've had in scaling a tech giant that you know still brings a smile or a chill uh, to you? Yeah, um, I think the most memorable, I mean, so many memories, but the most memorable example, um, as you know, in in 2000, when we, sorry, 2020, when we had COVID, that was a very difficult time for a ride share business. Imagine being trapped in a car with windows, you know, up, and this is during COVID. Yeah. We had drivers that were, um, frankly, kind of concerned about driving. And then, yeah. of course, we had riders who were also concerned about COVID. These were in the very early days. So leading a ride share business through COVID was very memorable. Um, specifically, one of the things we did was work with our level five um, organization within Lyft at that time, that was the aut- autonomous driving unit. And we actually designed these um, plexiglass dividers that would go between the driver and the rider in the car. Right. Um, and I remember in our factory or distribution center, um, physically putting together these plexiglass uh, dividers. Um, and, you know, I, I, physically help put them together. Everybody did. It was all hands on deck. We ended up distributing thousands of these through the driver centers at Lyft. Um, and so this was 2021, yeah. 2021. Um, and then fast forward several years recently, I was in a market out West and I actually rode in a Lyft that still had one of these plexiglasses in the back. All and so right. I took a picture and I sent it to my colleagues and I said, oh my gosh, I haven't seen one of these in forever. Do you remember when we <laughs> used to put these together? Um, and then wouldn't you know it, so after my lift ride, I got out of the car, I took a picture of this this plexiglass. Then I went into um, to our, our Techstars Accelerator and yeah. one of the founders um, from this company called Chassis, they make uh, robotics, um, software deployment workflow product. Um, mm-hmm. And anyways, he happened to be an engineer at level five at Lyft at the time when I was there. And he was the one that helped us design these plexiglass dividers. And he was at a Techstars cohort class that I was visiting. And so then I showed him this picture that I was like, I literally got out of this Lyft. You helped me design. It was, it was really incredible. And it just goes yeah. to show, you know, your work lives on and it's um was one of those moments where i just felt so like a sense of purpose and pride it's a hell of a story i I love it um surely so you know from funding mix out to navigating the ups and downs of entrepreneurship uh you've served the waves of startup life like like a pro what were some of the most valuable lessons um you know you learned along the way um i don't know pro i don't know about like a pro i would say I, I think um, building anything, whether it's a startup or a business, um, it's about being able to both dream really big and to have vision, but then also being able to execute, right? It's 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 a little bit of both, right? And I think that particularly for startups, you have to have, A, have a compelling vision. You have to be able to sell it. I'm sure you have had guests that comes on and tell you that you know, endlessly. Mm. But at the end of the day, you got to take that vision and you got to build a team and you got to be able to execute it. And um, there, it, we're in a world where a lot of people have very similar ideas. Um, mm. And the idea itself is not necessarily unique, although you do have to dream big, you do have to have a vision. What differentiates people is really about that execution piece is to say, OK, now here's my dream. I see it 10 years down the road. How do I break that down into what I need to do, you know, tomorrow, a week from now, a month from now, a quarter from now, a year from now, Um, and then building a team and have the discipline to do both the strategy and then the detail. 
um, mm-hmm. especially because in the beginning of a startup, you literally you're the you know chief bathroom cleaner, right? Chief like <laughs> right, right, right. spreadsheet artist, right? There is you literally do everything, and it's the ability to be able to balance those two that I think is really critical. Mm. I hundred percent agree, and uh, like when I actually look at Techstars, to me it's uh, you know like it's a global network, it's like a vibrant marketplace of ideas and innovation. Like so, actually, here's a question to you, uh, Shirley. How, how do you plan to tap into this dynamic ecosystem to create win-win partnerships that um, you know fuel growth uh, for tech stars and its portfolio companies? Yeah, um, there's a, a bunch of ways we do that. I think one of the ways that we do that is we have these amazing corporate partnerships. So, mm-hmm. for example, we have a corporate partnership with AB and Emro in um, in Amsterdam where we have a fintech program. Yeah. And one of the ways we leverage our corporate partnerships is to be able to, um, you know, both give corporate partners what they're looking for. In this case, they're looking for bringing innovation and bringing that startup spirit into a very large financial services organization and really invigorate their internal teams and help them think um, creatively. And then for our founders, it's about giving them access to this financial giant that they can run pilots with, which is incredibly invaluable for for startups because as you know um you know outside of money i think probably traction for startups is the lifeblood right continuously Mm -hmm. showing traction to be able to then fundraise is absolutely critical for them so our corporate partners really help our startups do that i think another way that we really tap into our network is that we have this global reach and with global reach we're able to um, you know, again, reach into sort of the corners of, uh, of the market where people may not be looking and then be able to find startup mm-hmm. founders. So, for example, um, we just announced a partnership with IDB Labs where we are running, you know, I talked about EcoDev um, products earlier, but running pre-accelerator startup weekends and founder catalysts, so pre-accelerator programs yeah. in Central America. And we're doing that in six different countries. We're focused on female STEM founders. Um, and this is the type of network and reach that we have that then we can eventually bring to our accelerators um, that is really unique. And unless you have that global network, it's very hard to do. 100%. Um, surely sounds amazing. Um, what trends do you foresee, uh, you know, shaping the future of startup ecosystems and how can Techstars adapt to uh, to it and, you know, stay ahead of the curve? Yeah, I think that with um, this very challenging environment that we see in the yeah. VC market and just in tech in general, there is such... Um, richness in terms of talent out there thinking about building something um and with now the developer tools out there you can be a non-technical founder and be able to develop something very quickly so we see a lot of talent out there um we'll continue to see talent but i think what the challenge you see in a lot of markets is that unless you're based in you know london new york san francisco it's hard to get funding um and you're kind of you're you're sort of like trying to figure out how to get traction. And so again, if we go back to sort of the ecosystem development work, the pre-accelerator work that we do in these markets, um, what we're seeing is a lot of interest in both governmental institutions and in universities to help really develop this like pre-founder, pre-equity like founder layer of talent. Um, and we're seeing a lot of interest in partnering with us to do that work in order for us to help prepare that next generation of founders. Um, and you're starting to see that really kind of an unprecedented sense of momentum because we understand or the governmental institutions understand, the universities understand that there's a lot of talent and a lot of IP to potentially tap into and to commercialize, but they need the like structural support in the network and the mentorship Mm-hmm. Um, and the curriculum, frankly, um, and the community in order to bring these founders to market. So, yeah. so we're seeing a lot of interest in that. Awesome. Um, Shirley, I also know that, um, you know, you're a vivid fan of tennis and running. Oh. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you know, as someone who has conquered marathons, you know, both on the track and, and in the boardroom, yeah. um, you know a thing or two about staying the, you know, on the course of, and and kind of powering through challenges. Um, how, how do you channel that endurance mindset to lead tech stars to, towards its goals? Um, 
I think it helps to be a little bit of an introvert because you're in your head a lot. At least it was for me for running. You know, I would spend way too long training. Um, mm. I think it's about strategy and and um, obviously pacing yourself. So I'll I'll make a kind of analogy. The I am not the fastest runner. I'm actually quite slow. In fact, that's why I ran marathons because in high school. I did track um, as a way to keep me in shape for lacrosse, which is a, a very much of a North America U.S. Mm. sport. I don't think we have it in Europe. Um, but anyways, when I was in track, I wanted to sp sprint, and um, and the coach was like, "Surely you're you're not a sprinter. Why don't you try long distance?" And yeah. that was a very nice way of telling me I was not fast. So I decided to take up long distance running. Um, and um, one strategy I found to be able to finish the marathon is um, this method called like you you run and walk at the same time, and you start mm -hmm. from the very beginning. You literally like mile one or kilometer one, um, yeah. you would run and then you would you would say okay I'm gonna walk for 30 seconds and I'm gonna run for nine minutes and I'm gonna walk for 30 seconds or whatever the sort of mm -hmm. off and on schedule you have, and that allows you to go a really long way right without being tired so that towards the end you're still you're fresh. Um, and I think that's the same with finding, you know, founding businesses and startups yeah. and building companies, big or small, right? It's about having the big vision. Um, hey, I want to do a marathon, but then be able to break it down into really digestible chunks to say, mm -hmm. okay, what is my goal? What's my OKR? What's my goal this month, next month? How do I create a really compelling vision, but again, a very tactical execution plan? so that I can continue to check myself and say, am I on track, am I on track, am I on track? Mm -hmm. um, and it is a really long-term long, you know, long journey. I think that as startup founders, um, overachievers, people tend to want to go really, really fast because you want to be able to see traction. And particularly if you raise funding, you know the pressure you're getting from your investors to say, they want to see the like, you know, up and to the right really quickly. But I think it's really important to remember to say, listen, like any chart up and to the right is something that you got to then look at the time scale, right? The up and to the right chart is really deceptive because you don't know what the time scale is. And the up and to the right time scale, usually for startups is, you know, at least five, if not 10 years. And so you got to think about if you want to go up and to the right, you have to be able to think about that in like a five, more like 10 year chunk. And then think about how do you then break down that so that you can pace yourself through that entire journey. Um, and that's really critical because so much of being able to be successful in a startup or in any building of a business, it's just your ability to stay with it, you know? I love it. I love this piece of advice. And um, you actually kind of answered uh, my next questions because I was just about to ask you, you know, um, to imagine you're at the starting line of a marathon about to embark on another um, journey. And, um, and then like, what advice would you give to founders gearing up for their startup marathon? Uh, if you want to add anything to it, um, then this is, uh, you can do that now. Yeah. Um, am I frozen? Okay. Um, I, 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 I'll add one more thing. Um, I think that a marathon is such a, it's, it's so funny you honed in on that in my bio. I love that because I never thought of it this way, but there's a lot of similarities between so many, right? Right. Being an entrepreneur and, and running long distance, um, being an entrepreneur is super lonely. Running is a super, can be a really lonely task, right? Mm. I, I, for me at least i like to run alone i don't like to run with a pack only because again i'm slow and so i can't keep up with the pack yeah. um but i think being able to what i loved about marathon running is that you're by yourself and you know you've got this race and like you're the one that has to get it done mm -hmm. but you have people around you to help you cheer you on And so what's incredible about my favorite marathon is the New York City Marathon. A, because yeah. I live here, it's easy to get to. <laughs> But B, the energy is incredible. Um, there's just people like high-fiving you on the street, like kids, like high-fiving you. And mm. um, it just gives you energy along the way. And I think that's very similar to building a startup is that community you build. And it's a journey that you have to go through yourself. But the community you build 
of your team, of your of your um, advisors, of your mm-hmm. mentors, and that's what TechStars does for you is to help you build that community is really, really invaluable because you never know who somebody knows who can be helpful to your business. So for example, our founder could be sitting in Mentor Madness, which is one of the hallmarks of Techstars. In week two and week three, we put you in front of 60 to 100 mentors yeah. and the magic happens. So madness and, and magic happens. Mm-hmm. Um, you never know who is in front of you and that they that person may not have a direct connection into your business, but they may know mm-hmm. someone who does or a family member, a friend or a colleague. And so it's building that community while you're you know, in this journey, which is very much about being focused within and being able to execute. I think that's, um, you know, that's, that's the biggest parallel and lesson for me on running and startup building. I love it. I had one guest um, some time ago on the podcast, Jacqueline Van Den, Van Den Ende. She's building, um, uh, she's like mobilizing billions of dollars to help solve climate change with her uh, company. Uh, carbon equity and um, she's also a marathon runner and she told me that um, one day she was running a marathon and um, what she realized while running it was super tough of course uh, is that if she keeps putting one foot ahead of the other and just keeps moving she will sooner or later uh, you know, get to the finish of this and we'll just complete this journey. So I think this is also a funny uh, thing to say that, you know, like you just kind of, you're just going to keep on going. Um, maybe sometimes, you know, change the direction a bit or like, as you said, like sometimes run a bit faster and sometimes sl- run a bit slower. And well, at the end, you're going to make it to the finish line. And um, yeah, so just um, perseverance, I think here is like kind of a, um, also a big factor and actually this is kind of a thing that I wanted to ask you um, about next because mm-hmm. speaking of marathons I promise it's the last question uh, about marathons what's like one race day memory that you know like kind of perfectly captures the spirit of perseverance and this you know triumph of uh, completing the marathon for you yeah um, so I've run the New York City a few times. The toughest part for me is this part in Queensboro Bridge. Um, I I think it's like mile 15, 16, although I feel like I remember that it was more like in the low 20s when I ran it because I was really tired at that point. Um, And the reason why that's memorable is because you're on this bridge, which means that there's no spectators, right? Because usually, uh, why I mentioned earlier, like you're high-fiving people. That's like in like Brooklyn and Queens, there's people on the streets. But on the Queens Amazing energy. Yeah, amazing energy. Um, And on the bridge, it's like there's no spectators because no spectators go on the bridge. And what's interesting is that... um, the bounce you feel on your feet is different, right? On the road, you don't even realize there's like uh, a sense of balance you get. But on the bridge, yeah. every step you take is like, you feel like you're like in the sand, like, oh my God, what's going on? <laughs> and so it's particularly tiring. And all you can hear on the bridge is just people breathing next to you, like the like some people breathing really hard, some people mm. dropping behind. And it's quite sad actually on this bridge. But mm. I think what's really incredible about that moment is that's the moment you know you're at the lowest point of the race and that you know you know you go through highs you go through lows as a startup founder there's highs and lows every single day sometimes within within the hour within minutes you can hear something great and hear something bad at the same time Mm -hmm. and that's the low point for me on the race always and but you know that if you just get through that you're going to get through a high point again and then mm-hmm. you're gonna get to the point where people are cheering on the side, and you can get energy, you can get inspiration. Um, and so, to me, that's always like the most poignant moment because you know it's you are literally going through the toughest time, and that if yeah. you can get through that, then it's all um, you know downhill from there. Amazing, surely. Um, lastly, as you strap in for this, you know, exciting ride with Techstars. What's one thing you hope to accomplish that, uh, probably there's like many things, but yeah. let's say what's one thing um, you hope to accomplish that will, you know, make you look back and say, wow, um, that was a hell of a journey. Yeah, I mean, I think that, so there's um, 
two things. Obviously, at Techstars, what we do is we help build our founders' companies and help them reach, you know, incredible, incredible highs and make an impact. But one of my main goals at Techstars is to also help Techstars build as a company and and therefore 2.0.、Right. Um, we have a vision at Techstars, so we have our own.、Um, Ambition as a company,、um, mm-hmm. we are building、uh, a very unique、um, institutional investment business in the pre-seed stage, unlike any other. And、um, this is the phase in our company journey where we're going from a model where I would say it's a federation of accelerators into、um, pulling that together into a more centralized, more powerful, more scalable、um, business. And so, if I'm able to do this at TechStars,、uh, which I have a great team and、um, to help me do this, and be able to build us into a multi-billion-dollar、uh, institutional pre-seed investment business, investing in thousands of companies a year. Right now, we invest in about seven to eight hundred startups a year. We have ambitions to do thousands.、Yeah. Um, if I'm able to do that, to me, that would be、um, quite a privilege and a life's work to be able to do that. Amazing, Shirley. Thank you so much for sharing your story and insights、um, about all things tech stars, startups, venture capital, and marathons. I hope one day we will、uh, run a marathon together, or at least have a jog. Yeah.、Uh, it's so lovely to meet you. Thank you so much for your time, and、um, I wish you all the best. And I'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Martin. Talk to you later. Take care.